Hello, real estate agents. Welcome to the Weekly Closer. I'm your host, Jeff Underwood, along with my co-host, Joey Sampaga, the man with the plan, and we are the real estate marketing yeah. maniacs, aren't we? We are. We are. That's yes, right. Yes, we are. We have a great guest with us today. Oh, I like that music. Yes. We have Mark and Cayman Captain with the team captain at Keller Williams Legacy One Realty. Thank you for coming in. The captain team. The captain team. Yeah, thanks no, for team having captain. us. Team, team captain. captain. Team captain. Team captain. Yes. Az. Awesome. That's where we are. How well, are you thanks guys doing? for having us. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Lisa Macbeth invited you in. I think right. Yes, sir. She's awesome, huh? Absolutely. Yeah, she's cool. Over at security title. She rocks. Absolutely does. Well, let's get into let's get into the show and, and first start with how long you've been in the business and what got you into real estate. How about that? All righty. Uh, believe it or not, I found my passion later on in my life. So uh, I started out as an appraiser, and yeah, my wife and I were running our practice back in the early 2000s. She actually yeah. started in 96, and as I was working retail management with Costco Wholesale, <coughs> uh, excuse me, I uh, looked over her shoulder, and she became my mentor, and I thought, you know what? We could run our own practice here. So that's we right. started appraising, and that's how it all started, just start, started out uh, valuations and and doing the residential appraisal. And uh, I always had the passion to sell. And, uh, you know, I later looked at getting into sales and thought, you know what, this is a way, a great way for us to extend our business. Yeah. And uh, so I went through and got the schooling behind me and in 2000, late 2010, got that taken care of. So it's only been about six and a half years that I really started the business wow, and got okay. things moving. So I right. uh, found my pa- passion later on in my life, but, uh, Loving it. Loving it. Loving it. 2010. So that would have been right when right things when everyone started. Was getting out. Everybody, well, <laughs> yeah. Or uh, people were getting some good deals on homes, right? Absolutely. Yeah, it was uh, very challenging. I had people uh, wondering what I was doing, and, and I really had a good game plan. I thought, you know, with us doing these appraisals and uh, helping the banks out, why shouldn't yeah. I look into selling these homes as opposed to just doing the appraisal end of it? Right. So. Yeah, for sure. And so then you uh, brought Cayman on board, right? How long? You, how long? Yeah. So I got licensed 2013, and uh, when you're born into a family where real estate is talked about at every <laughs> dinner, <laughs> uh, you know, I was kind of well. Hey, why don't I join the team and we can run side by side? And it's been a blessing in disguise. It's not every day that you get to work alongside your, you know, your father. And um, you know, I've learned a lot just shadowing him over the course of the last four or five years. So, yeah, I bet. I bet. Yeah. I bet you tell uh, stories about your dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. He won't admit it. He'll never toot his own horn, but he forgot to mention that year he got in the business, he actually won Rookie of the Year. Really? Yeah, uh, there we go. Wow, nice. So, you know, that's that's pretty impressive. You know, I, I never took is. that stat home, that's for sure. <laughs> well, you're looking tan, too. Did you just take a trip? Well, it's funny you mentioned. Uh, we spent a couple weeks in uh, Hawaii. Yeah. And wow. uh, believe it or not, I've never taken a two-week vacation in my entire life. And I'm glad I did. It was uh, it was an amazing time. I got to see some family. My sister lives out there. So it was oh, great really? to see okay. her and spend some time with her and my brother-in-law. Uh, but most importantly, just being there as family and soaking up the sun. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, you, did you stay here and take care of the business? <laughs> no. I oh, got, you went too? Yeah, I got to go join, <laughs> yep. All right. So tell us a little bit about what you're doing to be successful now. I know that there are a couple niches, um, one that you're going to be moving into even more so. Uh, but you want to share about the millennial kind of angle that you guys are, or kind of yeah. how, how you're helping the younger folks? So the younger the younger crowd that we see right now, they don't they – don't understand the qualification process they don't even know that they can go and buy a house they they automatically jump to the conclusion hey i need to find a house i'm going to rent so um you know that i've seen for instance i just did a deal the last name the uh the client of ours was the chacones uh they came to me and they said hey i've got about 17 1800 a month that i can work with so find me a house in gilbert i said well have you met with a lender do you know? Can you qualify? Because yeah. they both had steady income. They both worked. Um, and sure enough, we found them a house where their payment, they, so they purchased, and their payment was lower than what their rent would have been, what they were looking for. I think they uh, they ended up mortgage and everything is right, right around 1600 a month. Yeah. So they're saving. They were looking to go up to 18. You know, they're saving 200 a month. Right. That, right. to me, is a, a no, no-brainer. And from there, they're able to start their, you know, investment portfolio. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe there's a misunderstanding with 
where the price point is, mm-hmm. uh, not really taking into consideration the fact that interest rates are at historic lows still. Yeah, yeah, um, interest rates are still doing big, great. Yeah, we can make make a big difference for sure. No, that's great. I think that's a, uh, you know, that's a group. I'm I'm sure. I know you mentioned that you're you're doing some Facebook ad type stuff, but also the Instagram crowd, right? Right. That younger generation is going to want to be on the Instagram stuff. Um, possibly Snapchat. I don't know if you're kind of playing around yeah, that's with that a, one that's yet a tougher not, market <laughs> to hit because you definitely got to have everyone following you back um yeah. you know when you have with instagram y- you can have the explore page and it just goes off of it no different than facebook the way that their their system works is however many likes you get it'll make you a little more popular and sure. that you know everyone else that's following that page or that person it'll show what they're liking and yeah and so it, it kind of works out a little bit better for what we're trying to do yeah for sure i do have a snapchat account so I'll have to uh, follow you when we're done here. Well, <laughs> I only I usually only use it when my daughters send me a text that says, "Dad, <laughs> I sent you a snap." There you go. It's like, okay, I better check it out. I guess yeah. right. We've uh, had fun with Snapchat just on more of a personal level. We haven't uh, sure. invited the whole business end of it, so we can be a little more candid with ourselves and have a little more fun in terms of, uh, uh, you know, maybe. Maybe not doing anything illegal. I don't want to sound like like that. <laughs> I was going to say, you want to elaborate? Fun. Because I think you told me something <laughs> about this. Uh, just doing some crazy stuff that we wouldn't normally do, but uh, we're, we're keeping it legal. So it's been a lot of fun. I just joined Snapchat back in July, and, of course, my kids think they think it's hilarious because I'm, I'm doing some nutty stuff on there. So it's been fun. So you're not sending your snap code out to your dad? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Well, what are you guys doing right now to be successful? I mean, this has been a good year, and we're going into 2018, the beginning of it now, and uh, what are you doing, or what are you changing? I would say for us, the biggest thing is uh, we've really tried to support each other as a team to stay committed to the lead generation every single morning yeah, from 9 to 12, and sometimes longer. You know, our goal is to get one appointment a day um, and to make 25 contacts, and we've stayed committed to it at times and there's been times we haven't been so we've we've yeah. now met as a team and been more consistent to really uh, you know make it make a point of how important it is and it really is it's the engine it's yeah, the engine sure. behind the whole operation that if you're not making contacts you're not reaching out to others um, to see if they're open to buying selling or leasing real estate uh, you're in the wrong business right. I, I did, you know as much as I'd like to say I, I 100% referral business and people call me I think that's a lot to ask uh, we're proud of the fact that we're able to turn 35 to 40 homes a year just from referrals uh, but we know that we want a bigger business out there and uh, we know how important it is to reach out and and to right. push the lead generation so I think that's been our, our biggest engine uh, staying consistent with that mm-hmm. uh, building relationships making sure we're we're uh, presenting a value to our clients uh, it's it's easy for me to, to go in there and, and be like everyone else, but I've challenged the team to provide world-class service. We're not going to accept anything less. We're going to make sure that our clients have an exceptional experience once they're done with us. Yeah. Uh, so some examples would be if, if you're a seller, you might hear from my assistant, and she's likely going to call you and say, how's everything going with the move? Do you need boxes? Do you need tape? Uh, can we order you a pizza? And we wow. know you're busy packing. You probably don't even have time to order food. Uh, what can we do to make this process more, you know, just easier and, and less painful? Because let's all face it, moving is no fun. Right. It's a, it's a, it's a challenge. Uh, ordering even moving trucks, uh, junk haulers, uh, painters, landscape, whatever we can do to make the experience exceptional is what we do. Oh, that's great. We're not willing to do anything less. We really want to make sure it's right. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's been... Uh, the biggest thing for us well, it's been good right i mean it's been a, a good year for you guys and you're growing the team absolutely like. absolutely so. we we close about 100 homes every year and and we're looking to grow that to 140 homes for 2018 uh so wow, just a short of 30 million this year and and our goal is to to push 40 million plus for 2018 so uh the Kamen's way, got some work to do then he's, right? he's yeah, got some work to right. do uh, we've brought on a new hire, so she's great. She's been with us for a year now, so she's got some, some yeah. great uh, skill sets behind her and training with us. And we're always looking for talent, so yeah, it, you know, sure. I, I certainly look forward to growing our team. So All it's right. been a lot of fun. All right. And you mentioned your database, um, 30 to 35% referrals. 
uh, from that. And you're using a, um, a system. So you're, you're staying in front of the database. How often and what kind of things are you putting out there? So in terms of our database, I would say some of the basics, you know, naturally whenever we have a new listing, so that's mm -hmm. a great thing for our clients, they need to know that yep. we're hitting 4,000 plus people just within our database. Um, and that's growing up to, I think we're up to 4,500 now. So uh, at least they know that uh, it's not only hitting our database, we're not only cross-marketing with other agents uh, and the MLS and everything else that we do, but uh, on that database, we want to make sure that our clients, our past clients, have first dibs on any listings that are becoming available. There you go. So yeah. we want to make sure they're they're hit with any new flyers coming soon, listings and whatnot. And then naturally, it's a great way for us to just stay in touch with them, see how they're doing, see how their families are. Uh, so as a team, we do touch our past clients and make sure they know who we are still. You know, yeah. I'm not interested in doing a, a transaction with you and waving bye-bye and never doing anything with you again. I, it's important for us to earn your business for a lifetime. Sure, sure. And uh, so, for for example, we want to make sure we stay in front of them. Right, right. Yeah, and so. I think some of the stats are pretty uh, alarming as far as yeah, people buying a house and then they'll ask them shortly after, hey, would you use the same agent? A lot of times they say yes, most of the mm -hmm. time, right? But then they go to resell and they're like, well, I don't know how to get a hold of them. Exactly. Right? So, isn't uh, that scary? So they isn't lose. Scary? The, they lose that potential, that lifelong business opportunity. Yep. Really. Uh, oh yeah, we have a client, uh, and I'll quickly share with you that uh, I met back in 2011, and since then we have turned over five million dollars worth of real estate just from that one lady that I met through her friends, family, and people that basically exploded from just yeah. that one deal. So no one's going to tell me that it's not imp important to take care of your right. clients because yeah. you just never know. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Now, I know you mentioned, too, that uh, for 2018, you're going to um, put some additional focus also in the luxury Absolutely. arena, right? So certain plans there, certain uh, kind of what's leading you that direction? Yes. we've uh, We have Maddie, uh, who's our new marketer, who's a intern from ASU that's uh, just recently started with us and she's already in the works of building uh, pages and whatnot through Facebook and we want some luxury presence through uh -huh. through those channels um, making it naturally an exceptional experience I think a mm -hmm. lot of the agents are getting relaxed and uh, complacent and so we do nothing we're not going to just put together a, a a slideshow we're gonna make sure that every luxury listing has a live video yeah. throughout the entire house so they have that 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 tour um, and then of course we're gonna make sure that we're hitting thousands of agents so we want to make sure that we do a good job of collaborating with not only uh, those potential buyers within our audience but you know it's important to collaborate with agents so right. uh, that's a big plan for me is to make sure I stay in front of the top agents uh, we have that list so yeah. we email them every time we have a luxury listing so they see and uh, um, I think that's been the biggest thing for us is just staying in front of the other agents and making sure that we're hitting the right audiences yeah. and uh, doing what we can to take care of that. So it's been a lot of fun so far, and uh, we look forward to that. Good. All right. All right. How about before? So before we get into the next segment, why don't we? Uh, and I'll ask this kind of a both of you. But we'll start with with you, Mark. If an agent comes to you today and. and you know, maybe their business has slowed a bit or maybe they're new to the business. What would you tell them that they need to do right now? And they're a newer agent? Either newer or the business has just slowed a bit. I think a few of the questions I would ask them is, what are you doing now? And uh, I would immediately assess just their activities. And if their activities aren't matching what their ultimate goals are, then, then I would help them align those two. Yeah. So if a new agent said, well, you know, I'm, I'm, in the morning, I'm just going through and making flyers, and I'm doing everything I can to uh, to stay in front of some of my clients. I'll call back, you know, these people or those people, and um, you know, my first question is, well, how often are you calling them? How many people are you calling? Are you purposeful about it? Do you have a, a list every day that you've prepared? Uh, so my suggestion to them would be to prepare themselves ahead of time. Yeah, make sure they understand that. It's hard to, to wake up it, in the morning and show up at your office and then just start organizing yourself. You know, so right. think about who sure. you're going to call uh, and, okay. and make sure you're purposeful. And, and I would say right out of the gate uh, for sell by owners, canceled, expired, 
uh, a new agent, they're going to likely have more traction with their sphere, people that trust them already. Right. Um, okay. But I would say that uh, those that have more experience, I would just look at their activities and make sure it's it's matching, you know, their goals. Yeah. And more times than not, I can nail it down with just them saying, well, if I ask them, how many contacts do you make a day? And if, if they look at me with that deer in the headlights <laughs> look, I say, well, uh, how do you expect your business to change right. when you're not reaching out to anyone? Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, well, I say hi to the barista every morning. What? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> and I think a lot of people look at uh, contacts as cold calling. Mm -hmm. And that's a big part of what we do, but that's not all we do. And I think being that our business has grown, we have opportunities to reach back, you know, not only to our past clients, yeah. uh, but let's be honest, I, I, when I'm out to dinner, uh, especially if I have a great experience, uh, I love to hand my card to that server and say, you know what, I would love to return the favor someday. Please contact me if you're ever thinking about buying, selling, or leasing real estate. Our team will take great care of you. I'll, I'll make sure that happens. Uh, the experience here has been great. So that's awesome. I, think, oh, that's I like it. Yeah, I, like yeah I think with that, you know, the moral of the story is you have to contact as many people as you, you can't make it a secret that you're in the business, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, otherwise, yeah. you're you're in trouble. So. Yeah. Uh, if you're not comfortable cold calling, then you better get out there and you better meet a lot of servers or you better get mm -hmm. out there and talk to every store manager at the mall, whatever it takes. Uh, and, and, you know, that's that's my motto is just to make right. sure that I hit my contacts. And I'll tell you, when you don't when you're doing it on a regular basis um, and you stop that habit, it feels like it feels so unnatural. It feels like you. You woke up and, and showed up at the office with your shirt off or something. You just <laughs> you, you forgot to brush your teeth or something's missing. And yeah. I'm telling you, when it becomes a habit, it's yeah. it's it's great because okay. you, you feel awkward when you don't do it. And that's when you know you got it is when you do it and you're committed to it. No, that's great. That's great. How about, Cayman, what about uh, if you needed to give um, a word of advice to, let's say, uh, uh, maybe a younger millennial that's in real estate? or getting in the business don't let the little demon on your shoulder tell you you can't you know when I got licensed I was 19 and I always thought well you know who is going to buy a house from an individual or myself who hasn't even done the process himself you know I at that time I, I hadn't bought a house and that was always kind of my hurdle that I had to jump over um, if I could give any advice to a newer agent I'd say take advantage of any opportunity that you run into um, you know, I scenario for myself on Sunday, I just drove to Superior. Uh, I would have loved to, for one, sleep in and uh, watch some NFL Sunday. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I was working and I drove an hour and a half uh, to show a, a house to a client who's relocating from Minnesota. And uh, we actually call these clients. She had a real estate agent, but didn't want to go out there and show the house. Mm. So we call these these clients orphan clients. So if they are previously working with another real estate team or an agent and that agent isn't wanting to do the work, then we'll happily you know take on that work. And um, you know, like I said, I drove out there and I got them under contract today. So uh, they are going to be moving here on the 19th of next month. And uh, you know, so going back wow. on it, just yeah. taking any opportunity that you can have. Um, you know, if, if you have a, a renter that wants to look, I know it's not a standard commission, but it's still, you know, you're still going to make some sort of money. And uh, on top of that, you're making a relationship. Yeah. Uh, when I first got licensed, 33 transactions my first year, all rentals. Of the following year, about five of those 33 actually came and re they repurchased through me. So, yep. you know, you just kind of, you start that foundation. You got to grow somehow. So if I could give any advice, it'd be just take take advantage of every opportunity that prevails itself. Don't, you know, we, we've, I run into a lot of situations where agents kind of get in that, that mode where, you know, that's a lower price point. That's too much of a headache. I don't want to deal with that. Yeah. But just, you know, take advantage of it. Yeah, for sure. No, that's great. Good advice. Are you guys ready? Let's do it. To get in the ring? All right, let's do this. Here we go. <laughs> and and you guys can either both answer or one or the other, however you want to handle this. Uh, what's the best advice that anyone has ever given you? I'd say coming from my father, um, don't sweat the small stuff. Don't worry about things that are out of your control. You know, because we often worry about things that are so out of our control. Yeah. And uh, I thought that was a great piece of advice that he gave me. And I try to, there you, go. you know, as much as I'm 
disciplined and want this to happen and that to happen, there's there's times where I'm just going to let loose a little bit and say, you know what, can't control it. Yeah. So there's no reason to worry about it, right? So Yeah. We had somebody on the show, and they said uh, – it's just real estate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no one's going to die. We're not performing surgery here. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, you want to add anything? Or? Um, you know, going back to college baseball days, I, I think I one of the biggest uh, rules that we had on the, the team is if you're on time, you're late. So, you know, I kind of take pride in showing yeah. up 10, 15 minutes early before I meet with any client. And, you know, whether it's firing up the lights or even going and grabbing a Starbucks for the client before we go and, and view some homes. So... I kind of take pride in that, you know. If you Good. if you come into the office, I'm at my desk almost every morning by 9 a.m. No later, um, and the same thing whenever I run around with clients. You know, got to make yeah. sure you're on time. No, that's great, great advice. How about your favorite favorite mobile app? Favorite mobile app? Yeah, well, it's not going to be real estate related. I know that if I'm on Southwest or American Airlines and I'm booking a trip, and that would definitely have to be my <laughs> my favorite app. I mean, right. there's always the other tools with your GPS and whatnot, but uh, that. That comes to mind first because I know I'm, I'm going to go on a trip and you like to travel and huh? enjoy myself. Absolutely. That's How about yours? Anything Snapchat. Snapchat. Right? Any, Snapchat. Any social media, Snapchat, <laughs> Instagram, something like that. Nice. All right. How about okay. book recommendation? Well, I, I'm not much of a book reader, but the, the few books that I have read, I would say uh, yeah, Gary Keller's put out a book, The, the One Thing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, he's right. As much as we all think we're multitaskers and we can take on a, the world mm-hmm. and uh, we may have, you know, 10 balls in the air and 18 irons in the fire, uh, the reality is you're going to do average with most everything if you're not focused on the one thing. Okay. And I think um, if you really sit down in the mornings or late at night, whenever your prime time is to really have that uh, time with yourself uh, and you really look at what's most important you're going to be so much more productive and you're going to let you're going to allow your 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 focus to be just on that one thing as opposed to allowing all these other distractions into your life yeah and uh not that everything is not important but as soon as you start prioritizing it's it's uh it's almost scary you start prioritizing everything you know how can i get there quicker or how can i save money there and who can i leverage with that uh uh, so that's one thing that that uh, one thing book has been great. I I'm excited to read it again. Yeah, no, it's a great read. I try to explain that part of the book, the uh, multitasking thing, to my wife. <laughs> um, that might have been a mistake, but uh, because she says she can do it, so women she are says great at that. It. Yeah, chapter women was are written different. for men. That's right. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely right. <laughs> so I'll just go along with that. Absolutely. I don't know. <laughs> my wife does all the things she does, and. Uh, sometimes things will fall to the wayside, but I, I guarantee you that her her grade's going to be much higher than mine in terms of <laughs> getting multiple things done. Yeah, at once. Sure. So. Damon, you want to add one? You know, he actually took mine. The okay. one thing yeah, that was book. Uh, that book when I actually read it and I kind of bought into the program. There was when I originally got licensed. You know, I kind of I was in and out of it, kind of pushed back a little bit, and I didn't want. It was one of those things you don't want to listen to dad. You want to do it on your own, right? <laughs> And uh, the minute I, I bought into the program, that's really when my business took off. Um, I read the one thing. I was able to double my business, double my income in one year. Wow. Um, and I've actually done so ever, ever since. So it's been, it's been a, a great, uh, great book for anyone to read, especially if you're newer to the, to the industry. You can learn a lot. You know, I know Gary Keller, one of his big things just in the book real quick um, that he takes pride on is leverage. You know, you got to have leverage for your time in order to grow your business. So yeah. you got to make sure you have all the the right uh, right tools in your belt to make that help that yeah. make that happen. Absolutely. How about a productivity tool or software that you use on a regular basis? I would definitely say Insightly has been great. Uh, it's our CRM as well, but um, just keeping us on task. Uh, the reminders on the mobile phone as you're out and about. It's great to have those pop ups. Uh, there's times where if I have a 10 or 15 minute window and I'm sitting in my vehicle, it's great to just push that and slightly button, go through my contacts, who haven't I touched, who do I need to touch. Uh, and uh, I th- I'll tell you, it's it's a great tool and hopefully we can share that with the audience and, and they can look more into cool. it. I think it's helped us a lot. All right. Absolutely. All right. Yeah, I think, I think? Uh, I'm more into the, the dialers, right? So I use Vulcan 7 a lot. Okay. Uh, I'm probably on that on that website three, four times a week. And uh, it just makes your, your day a lot more smoother when you can just plug in all the numbers and you're not yeah. having to individually type every single one. Um, you just feel you're more effective throughout your day. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. 
All right, and we'll have you draw one more question. Uh oh. Out of the mask. This is beautiful. What is that, velvet? <laughs> What'd you get? What did you want to be growing up? Oh. Oh, nice. Wow. You know, I had a couple things, but I would have to say the first thing that comes to mind is a drummer for the most incredible rock band out there, uh, to name a few, maybe ACDC or, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've enjoyed music. Yeah. I have my own drum kit and I'm not making any money at it, of <laughs> course. Uh, is it in the garage? It's sitting in my <laughs> office. So you'll have my home office with my desk wow. and right next to it is my Pearl drum set and I'll tell you, it's uh, it's a lot of fun to jump from that seat to the drum seat, crank sure. up the music, and and let it rip. But like I said, yeah. not earning any money at it yet. But uh, <laughs> that's definitely something I would have loved to have done. Yeah. And who knows? Maybe Eventually, that that, that'll be the one thing, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right. Absolutely. You could start a band and move to Belize, where all the baby boomers are, and you could play some. There you go. <laughs> some seventies and eighties. Maybe there'll be some uh, two thousand twenty hair band or something, right? Uh, there you go. Pulled right out of the eighties or something. So Who I'm knows? picturing. As soon as you said that, I'm picturing. Uh, you've probably seen the movie The Big Short. Oh um, yeah. Remember the part when he's down in his basement and he's playing <laughs> the drums and he's got the earphones. Oh yeah. Anyway, oh, yeah. I'm just picturing yeah, that. How about yourself? What did you... Uh... Um, well, I always... My life has always been involved around sports, so I always thought I wanted to be a sports manager or a physical therapist or something in the in that yeah. kind of realm. And, um, you know, I actually... It took me getting hurt. So uh, 2012, before I was licensed, I ended up having a full shoulder reconstruction. Mm. Went through the whole process, and I saw the pain that the, my physical therapist put me through and what they deal with on a day-to-day, -day, and I said, there's no way that I would ever do this. Um, you know, it's kind of, uh, to me, it was a negative experience. Mm. And I like to involve myself around positive people or else you're not going to be yeah. having the, you know, the best day. Yeah. So, um, yeah. All right. All right. Well, thank you guys for sharing. Yeah. Um, if pleasure, agents course. that are watching or listening want to reach out to you directly, how would they do that? You can reach out to me anytime. My phone number is 480-695-3847. We're Team Captain AZ. We're Keller Williams team right here in the Phoenix area. Uh, reach out to me anytime. I'd love to speak to you, help you, coach you any way I can. I make a lot of mistakes, uh, but hopefully I, I've made enough where I can bring you to the, the next level or pull you out of that rut that you're in if you're in one. Uh, yeah, reach out to me. I'd All love right. to speak to you and help cool. you out. There you go. Mark and Cayman Captain. Thank you so much for being in here. Um, we also want to give a uh, shout out to Fidelity Home Warranty, Fidelity National Home Warranty. That is one of our sponsors on the show. Thank you so much. And until next time, this is Jeff Underwood and Joe Sampaga coming to you from Security Title Studios in the Biltmore. We are the Real Estate Marketing Maniacs. Take care. Bye bye. Adios. All right. Great job, guys. Great job, guys. Thank you. The Weekly Closer Podcast is sponsored by Jake Krabby, NMLS number 877141 at Academy Mortgage. Are you looking to buy or refinance a home? Jake Krabby is your mortgage professional. Contact Jake at 480-442-9291. Jake Krabby is a loan officer at Academy Mortgage, NMLS number 877141. State license for Arizona number 0920357. AZBK number 0904081 and New Mexico number 877141. Academy Mortgage Corporation, NMLS 3113 and New Mexico 01451. Call 480-442-9291. Address 15333 North Pima Road, Suite 205, Scottsdale, Arizona 85260. Academy Mortgage is an equal housing lender.